Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Demetra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to make aromatic sweet semolina cookies. They're delightful, they fall apart in your mouth. They're also known as seker pare in Greek. Now I'm going to show you how to make them vanilla almond flavored, but you can definitely add some mastic to it or your favorite, fl your favorite flavorings to make different versions of these. They're nice, soft little cookies, a little bit similar to Mela Macaruna, the Greek honey cookies. Let's go over the ingredients so we can start making these. These are perfect for the holiday season that is approaching. So for the dry ingredients, we need some all-purpose flour, semolina flour, baking powder, and some salt. We also need some confectioner sugar, almond extract, pure vanilla extract, two eggs. I have some almonds here, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. And then for the syrup, we're gonna need some granulated sugar, water, and I'm gonna be using vanilla extract. And I also forgot to say that we do have some softened, unsalted butter in the mixing bowl. We're gonna begin by creaming the butter and the sugar together. Always make sure that the butter is at room temperature and it's nice and soft. And start off at a slow speed. And then increase the speed to high. Once the butter is creamed, we're going to add the eggs one at a time and we're going to beat on high speed until it's all creamy. Make sure you go in and you scrape down the sides of the bowl so that everything is incorporated evenly. And I'm going to go ahead and add the almond extract along with the vanilla extract. And I'm going to mix this until it's nice and thick and creamy. It might look like this at one point. The eggs might start to curdle and break apart. Do not worry about it. As soon as we add the dry ingredients to this, everything is going to smooth out and come together. Now we're just going to mix all the dry ingredients together. Just go ahead and whisk everything together. We're just going to add a little bit at a time, maybe in three or four batches and incorporate everything until the dough comes together. As soon as the dough begins to come together and stick together like this and all of the flour is incorporated, you can stop mixing. So once the dough comes together, go ahead and transfer it onto your work surface and just knead it a little bit by hand just a few times so that way it just creates one nice ball of dough. It is going to be a little bit sticky, but resist the urge to go in and add more flour because we want these cookies to be nice and light and airy. We do not want them to be dense and dry and hard. So just set it aside and after a few seconds, it is going to be very easy to roll out and to work with. Let me just tell you a few things about the almonds. Now I like to get plain unroasted almonds and then just soak them in water the night before, the ones that I'm going to use. This batch makes about 20 to 24 cookies, so you're going to need about 20 to 24 almonds. I always do more because I do like to snack on them as I peel them and add them onto the cookies. You can also find the almonds uh, sold at the supermarket. They're going to be uh, labeled as blanched. A lot of times I find that those almonds are not very fresh tasting, so that's why I like to do it this way myself. I just soak the almonds overnight in some cold water in a little bowl, and then in the morning the almonds plump up a little bit and they become really nice and white, and when you hold them in your hand and you press them, the peel literally, literally comes off and the almond slips out, and that is what you're going to want to use, the unpeeled almond. So enough about that, let's start making these, let's start rolling out these cookies. So you can form the cookies in two ways, either using a little melon baller or a mini ice cream scoop. You can do it that way, that's the way I'm going to do it. You can also cut the dough into two portions and then form between 10 to 12 little walnut sized balls with each portion to give you between 20 to 24 cookies. But I like to use an ice cream scoop, I just take a little scoop at a time and then I form a little ball and I put it on a baking tray lined with parchment paper. This way you have uniform pieces of cookies. This method gives you all the same size cookies, but the best thing about making homemade cookies is that they don't have to be perfect. Take a peel almond and put it in the center of each cookie, insert it so that way just the top half sticks out, and then press the cookies down so they can flatten out a little bit. Actually, you can go ahead and press the cookies down first before you put the almond in. That would be smarter. So make sure the oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Bake them in the center rack until the cookies are nice and golden all around. That's going to take anywhere between 25 to 30 minutes. Keep an eye on them and in the meantime, now we're going to move on to making the syrup. To make the syrup, we're just going to add the sugar to a little saucepan along with the water. So it's two cups sugar and two cups water. Once it boils, we're going to remove it from the heat and then we're going to add the vanilla extract and just set it aside. So this is one of the very few instances when the syrup is going to be warm and the cookies or the pastry that's coming out of the oven 
is going to be warm because if you've been with me for a while, you must have heard me say over and over again, cool syrup, hot pastry or hot cookies. But in this instance, we're going to let the um, syrup stay over here on the counter. It's still going to be pretty warm when the cookies come out. And then we're going to pour the warm syrup all over the cookies as soon as they come out of the oven while they're in their tray. And then we're going to let them sit for about an hour until they absorb all of the syrup that they need. And I will show you what they look like as soon as they're done. So my cookies took 30 minutes to bake. You want to keep an eye on them when they're nice and golden, take them out. They can be ready in 25 to 35 minutes. It just depends on your oven. You're just looking for that beautiful golden color all around. As soon as they come out of the oven, pour that warm syrup all over them. Let them sit in the baking tray for at least an hour so that way they could absorb as much of the syrup as possible. There still is going to be some syrup left in the tray. You can gather, you can gather that all in a little bowl and then just pour it on top once you place them on your tray. But honestly, I like for the tops to be slightly crisp and the bottoms to be nice and moist and syrupy. Before I bite into these, and believe me, I am dying to bite into at least one. I have my cup of tea ready. I do want to tell you that there are some options for you to make, create different flavors with the same recipe. So I use vanilla and almond extract, but you can definitely use mastica, ground mastic gum. Put about a quarter teaspoon with the dry ingredient and it's going to give it that samali cake taste. Mastica is so delicious, not everybody loves it, but if you do, you can go ahead and add it with a little bit of rose water. Rose and mastica are a match made in heaven. You can do pistachios on top instead of the almonds. You can do that. You could even do pecans instead of the almonds. Any nuts will do. You can, you can also use the vanilla extract along with rose water. A tablespoon of rose water to a teaspoon of vanilla will give it a nice, delicate floral taste. Or you can use orange blossom water. Orange blossom water is also very nice and floral. Let me know how you guys are going to make it in the comments section down below, below because I'd love to hear what your favorite flavor combinations are. I'm going to go and take a bite of this right now. Just take a look at this cookie. Just look at the top. It's nice and crisp and buttery. The bottom is perfectly soaked in the syrup. I could really taste the almond and the vanilla. I love the taste of the semolina. It tastes like a Ravani cookie. If you have had my Ravani, it's delicious. I have two recipes of it on the channel and I'll post them in the card section up above. Go on over to the website, DemetriusDishes.com, print this recipe, make it, let me know what you think in the comment section and I will see you guys next time. Yes, us.